You're listening to the Joe Camo Show. Real sports, real talk. All right, guys, huge show today. I've got one of my online mentors on, Patrick Bitt-David. Welcome to the show, man. It's good to be on with you. Excited to have you on. And a lot of people say, Joe, where do you get that lion mentality? Because something with my brand that I've adapted over the years, the lion mentality, I've created terms that people now know in the fantasy industry as can sheepsis, people not wanting to conform and not wanting to go with the, with the, with the sheep mentality. And, you know, people are like, what motivates you? So this is one of my hidden secrets. Patrick with David, amazing content. You've run an amazing channel, Valuetainment. And I think you started off with just philanthropy, helping people. I think there's something in your soul that wants to help people succeed. And that's kind of what I gravitated to back in 20. I think I saw your first video back in 2015. And now you're branching off. It seems like you're kind of keeping the brand, but you're adding to it, interviewing, you know, some amazing people. And then maybe you can get into some of the people you've interviewed, including Kobe Bryant before his passing, some big names, you're doing big things, making big movements. And, you know, Again, with lion mentality, there's very few of us out there, man, and you're one of them, and I admire what you do. So for people that don't know you, can you please tell people a little bit about yourself? Sure. Born and raised in Iran, lived there 10 years. Uh, six weeks after Khomeini died, we escaped, went to Germany. I lived there for a couple of years at a refugee camp, came to the States, went to the Army, was at the 101st Airborne Division, Air Assault, got out, uh, wanted to be a bodybuilder, win Mr. Olympia. And then I met a girl named jean Vier who worked at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. She uh, uh, told me uh, the way to make money is financial services. I got into financial services. A day before 9-11, I started working at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, got my series 766, 31, 26, life and health, left them, went to Transamerica, was there for about seven and a half years. And in October of 09, started my own insurance company with 66 agents. And today we have around 18,000 agents in 49 states. And uh, investors are De La Hoya, Gabriel Brennan. We've raised uh, 10 some million dollars. And uh, outside of that, I started a YouTube channel part-time and uh, grew it from what it was to now nearly 3 million subscribers. And we have around uh, 3 billion total views online, I believe. Yeah, it's really remarkable and unbelievable. And a lot of people may ask this question and they probably kind of judge you and say, hey, that guy was spoon fed, uh, silver spoon. He kind of, you, you know, he got an insurance company. He's doing it on his own. Did you like for me, I started with zero. People know me. I started from zero and I've, I've taken something called fantasy and made it a reality out of all things, breaking out of nine to five to do fantasy football out of all things and make it a, a living. Did you start from, I would say, I don't want to say zero, but did you come from humble beginnings or did you have that financial backing to get like, I, let's say I want to start an insurance company. How do I do it? Like, how do I start from zero? Like yeah. Please. Carry so my, my dad was a cashier at a 99 cent store in Inglewood for 15 years. Okay. Making 1500 bucks a month. I've never lived in a house before. We've always lived in an apartment. Uh, it was three of us living in a one bedroom apartment off 1323 East Broadway, Glendale, California, before I joined the army. I went to the army to live there, to be there for 20 years because they offered me a GI bill at the time, $26,000. And I thought that was the way to go. So I got out. My mother ran out of money. She went back to Iran. And I started working at Bally's and I became a saver. I saved money at Bally's and then I worked at Transamerica, started making very good money in my fifth year. And I got obsessed with putting money aside. So I set aside 50K, then 100K, then 200K, then 500K. And then I took that half a million dollars I saved by 29 years old and I put it into the business at 30 and I grew it. And then years later in you know, 2012, I raised another few million. Then in 2017, I raised 10 million and it kept growing. So that's kind of, it was my money. My parents, I've never gotten an allowance in my life. My mom and dad have never given me any allowance in my life. I was the guy that had to go sell stuff outside, whether it was, you know, hats, shirts, anything I got my hands on to sell. That's kind of my upbringing. All right. So we have, we're kind of tighter for time today. We have 20 minutes. So I know you're a wealth of knowledge. There's so much in that brain that I want to just tap into in such a short amount of time. So I'm just trying to get as much and extract that information and try to give many people this information because a lot of people are stuck to nine to five. There's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Now, a lot of restaurant owners, we, we see it here in Toronto with Adamson barbecue. A lot of these, entrepreneurs are being shut down all that. So I don't, I don't want to get into that because that's a whole other discussion I had with Ian Smith. People can go back and listen to that. That was insane. Uh, what's going on with him in New Jersey and how he's standing and he's keeping his gym open through all this being fine, 15,000 a day, a lot of uncertainty. So let's just say I'm a guy who's unhappy in his job. Cause I was right. There's a lot of uncertainty and I can give kind of my 
you know, way I kind of got out of it, but I'm really curious. I'm stuck in nine to five. What do I do? I mean, I'm, I'm throwing my hands up in the air. My brother-in-law is one of those guys right now. He works at a cabinet factory. His English isn't the greatest. He immigrated from Iraq as well. You know, he, okay, Joel, if I leave my, I got a safe job. I'm making 20 bucks an hour. What do I do? Uh, okay. My English. Okay. Do I open a restaurant? No, that doesn't work. What can you say to people that are just unhappy with their job and want to break out kind of in a nutshell? Well, I got to tell you, there's never, ever in a history of mankind been a time that's easier to make money than today. Never. There's never been a time where it's easier to make money than today. Never. Uh, today's the easiest to ever make money. You got more weapons, more tools that you didn't have before. Uh, 20 years ago, you couldn't do what you're doing today because you'd have to go to a radio to be able to do this. And you had to have a name, start off small, and today you can start a podcast. You got 20 some thousand subscribers. You got a few million downloads on your podcast. Yeah. We didn't have social media 20 years ago. We didn't have YouTube. We didn't have Google. We don't have Facebook. People don't realize YouTube is free. Right. Facebook is free. You know, you can go on there and Instagram is free. TikTok is free. These tools are free. You know, it's officially the great equalizer to compete with the CNN, the Fox, the CBS, NBC. Being a celebrity today is no longer a big deal. It used to be a big deal 20 years ago. Today, there's YouTubers that are more famous than Hollywood celebrities. That right. was not the case 20 years ago. So number one, easiest time to ever make money. So how do you do it? Number two, find somebody that's doing what you like to do, who's making a lot of money, go work for them and shadow what they're doing. Right. For example, I went and found somebody who was working in financial services, making a million dollar year income. I went and shadowed this person. I watched them do what they did on a daily basis. I picked up their good habits. I dropped their bad habits. I applied it to my business. I started growing. I became who I am today. The fastest way to change your financial situation today is find somebody who's got the life you like, find somebody who's doing that, what you want to do, and see if they're willing to hire you and you can shadow them. And then eventually, when you start shadowing them, you're either going to be selling something or you're going to ask for equity. You're going to say, John, I've been with you for five years now. Here's what I like to do. I've grown your company. The numbers are not this much. I'd like to ask to see what I need to do to get a piece of the company. What can I do to get equity? And then you take the next steps. But it's not hard to create wealth today. It just takes a massive amount of effort because I've been posting every day since August 2015. I quoted Instagram people. Like, How did you get to 192,000 followers? Because I've been posting every single day. So kind of to add what you said, it, it, it is it is that, but you have to, it, how much effort should you anticipate? Probably a lot, right? Because I've been grinding for four and a half years. I'm still not where I need to be, yeah. right? You know, it's funny. You, you do what you do and, you know, you, 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 you're working, you're putting your head down. But for me, I've always been from the mindset of you are one relationship, one contact, one move away from an explosion. Let me say that again. One relationship, one new contact, one move away, one new strategy from an explosion. So we're going what we're going, what we were doing. I was doing videos, uh, uh, two minute videos. My first show on YouTube was called Two Minutes with Pat. I started in November of 2012. So I stopped putting two minute videos up. Doesn't do anything. I said, I'm going to go one a week for two years. We don't get a lot of results. Right. Two years later, I said, I'm going to take a different angle. I changed the channel's name to Valuetainment. Then I decided to do one video called Life of an Entrepreneur in 90 Seconds. That video was probably my 200th video I had produced online. I uploaded it on YouTube. I titled it, you know, Best Motivational Video of 2015. It gets 2,500 views in 24 hours. Then I go on Facebook on October 31st of 2015 at 3.13 p.m., Halloween day. I upload it on Facebook. I go to the mall with my dad and my two boys because it's Halloween. I come back three hours later, it's got a quarter million views. Yep. I go to sleep, I wake up, it's got 5 million views. By the end of the day, 24 hours, got 10 million views. 30 days later, it's got 30 plus million views. That video alone has got nearly 300 million views that's been shared on different platforms, right? How did that happen? Your, your one move, one contact, one relationship, one strategy, one content, one video away from an explosion. Unfortunately, most people don't st sit back and kind of come back and take a look at their data, right. take a look at their strategy and say, I got to tell you, you're not changing anything about it. Right. We got to make some adjustments. It's not looking good. This is actually not that attractive. You right. got to change something up. They don't look at the, the, the product that, were, that they put together to try to find a way to make that adjustment. So we've done that fortunately a few times and it's worked for us. And anytime we've plateaued, we're not assessing ourselves on how we can change. You know, one of the hardest things to do in America is to stay relevant for a very long time. You can stay relevant for six to 12 months. It's easy to do. Right. A few stay relevant for a couple of years. 
only a few stay relevant for decades, and that's because they constantly recreate themselves. That's one of the biggest challenges when it comes down to creating content is to constantly recreate yourself. I've had to do that. Like a lot of my advice was like, okay, who, who these are your top 10 running backs for the week. And everybody started, cause I was the first vlogger for fantasy football on Instagram. So everybody started copying me and then it got to the point where it was boring. So now I'm doing shower rants. I'm in the shower naked yelling at players. And Patrick, I don't know if you know this, but I get a lot of players and I know I'm kind of burning some bridges with players, but that, cause I say they suck and sometimes they tag them or other people tag them and they come at me, Le'Veon Bell. I've had it out with him online, Alexander Madison. And it's kind of like, I, I don't really care, but a lot of people are like, Joe, how could you say that about a player? I'm like, well, you know what? Squeaky wheel gets the grease. I just speak my mind. If they suck that week, they're going to hear it. Um, so if people are stuck in nine to five, is there like a simple one or two sentence at practice? Because I want to make this kind of episode evergreen. How to, let's say, how to break out of your nine to five. Is there something practical they can do right now? Like, okay, I'm in my nine to five. I'm grinding. I'm on the lathe. I'm, I'm doing machine shop. I, I don't like this job. My boss is an asshole. What do I do? Pat, just tell me something I could do right now to get the fuck out of here. Like, is there something you can say? Absolutely. Keep Please. your nine to five job. Find uh, a handful of other places that you can work after five o'clock. Right. And for a good five, six days a week, go work there part time and then transition out to be able to go full time to work with that person. And that's one route. If you want to go to a different job, the other route to do is if you're working your nine to five, have a side gig on what you're doing. I chose sales. You know, the highest paying skill set in the world, the highest paid skill set in the world is sales. Right. No, Steve Jobs wasn't an engineer. Steve Jobs was a salesman. Obama is a salesman. Trump is a salesman. Uh, coaches are salespeople. Belichick is a salesman. Pete Carroll is a salesman. Greatest coaches are great salespeople. They sell you on believing that my system works to get results. If there is a way you want to exponentially increase your income, you got to learn how to sell. You got to learn how to negotiate. That is the fastest way to make a lot of money. Now, some people say, Pat, I'm not a good salesperson. I guarantee you, if you go work with somebody who's a great salesman for three, six, 12 months, you're going to be a great salesman. Here's why. Most of us are born not speaking any language. How do we learn how to speak English? We're on other people that speak lang a language or English. I speak five languages. How do I speak Armenian? My mother speaks Armenian. How do I speak Assyrian? My dad speaks Assyrian. How, I speak, how do I speak Farsi? I was in Iran for 10 years. How do I speak German? I was in Germany for two years. How do I speak English? I was in America. So sales is a language. Right. If you learn the language of selling and negotiating, then you find a product that you want to sell. Now you can go do it anytime you want to do it and make the kind of money you want to make. But if there's one skill set that can change your life tremendously, is learning how to sell. Okay, but I already hear my fans say, oh, but Patrick, I got to go home. I got the kids. I got to go that's home. Your I'm problem. Tired. Then that's your problem. Then that's your problem. That's not my problem. <laughs> that is your problem. That, the problem is the person that wants to go home and watch football and do all that other stuff. That's on you. What I want to do is I want to be able to go to the football game. I want to be able to go sit right there. You know, one of my, I'm a big sports guy. So I, I, when the Lakers beat the Celtics, I was sitting right there, you know, game seven against the Celtics. When the Dodgers just won right now in uh, uh, Arlington, I was at the game, right. I was sitting right behind the pitcher. I had my wife and my two sons there. We watched them win the world series. When the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Arizona Cardinals, the Kurt Warner days, you know, the Harrison comeback yeah. before the halftime, I was right there. When the Kings won the first uh, NHL, I was right there. I wanted to make the kind of money to do whatever I wanted to do and go experience the most ridiculous sporting events around the world. And to do that, you need to have some money. So if a person says, I don't want to work that hard, I want to go home, that's your prerogative. That's why America allows you to make 20 grand a year, 50 grand a year, a hundred thousand dollars, you're a millionaire or be a billionaire. It's your choice. You get to choose based on the effort that you put in. Right. I've always seen you. You're pretty serious in your videos. I want to lighten you up for a second. What does Patrick do for fun? I know you've got a family. I've got a three-year-old and a one-year-old son. So I, we don't get out much now with the, with the, with the vid and all that stuff going on, but what does Patrick do for fun? Do you ever lighten up? When, when is, do you set a time and schedule a day where I'm going to shut, shut my brain down right now and just like play a video game or something? When do you have any time off? I am probably a, if you ask my family who spent time with me, I'm a big prankster. I love pulling pranks. I'm a <laughs> legendary prankster. When I was in the army, I had a reputation for being a prankster. So I enjoy a good prank. Right. I enjoy comedy. I enjoy uh, uh, wrestling with the eight, seven-year-old and my four-year-old kids. I love traveling. I love a good movie. Many times when I was coming up and I would come to the office, 
middle of the day, say I'm having a bad day and a negotiation didn't go right. I'm like, yeah, I'll be back. I'll tell my assistant I'd go and come back. I'd come back with popcorn all over my suit because I was watching a movie with a bunch of 80 year olds at 10 o'clock in the morning matinee. Right. And uh, I'd go and, you know, do that. There's a lot of different escapes I have. I'm a big card collector. Yeah. I got one of two of my cards right now that are on sale on heritage auctions. Uh, the Gretzky cards are on sale right now. I'm, I have a lot of different things that I do, but I would say those are some of the things I have fun, fun with. No, I appreciate it, man. I just want to keep it short and sweet today with you. Uh, last question here, because you're a big basketball guy. Who is the GOAT, LeBron James or Michael Jordan? And I'm going to say Jordan right off the bat, and I'm sure you probably grew up the same era as me. We got to go Jordan here, just for mental game alone, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're thinking about a 20-year run rate yeah. that you can bank on somebody and you can get them for a 20-year rate, I can see the argument for a LeBron James because of statistics and, you know, what he's going to end up uh, amassing. But if you want to go dominate the market with a decade period and you can bank on somebody that you know is going to show up every single night and scare the hell out of everybody, nobody comes close to Michael Jordan. LeBron doesn't come close to Michael Jordan when he sit there and actually debate uh, the run rate that he made over a 10-year period. Now, if you put 20 years, you know it's going to be LeBron. It's not going to be Jordan. If you say 10 years, it's Michael Jordan. So even if you put 20 years, LeBron's going to surpass uh, Kobe. I'm not a LeBron fan. Everybody who knows me, they know I'm not a LeBron, a LeBron fan, but I respect this game. Here's a challenge. Right. What happens if LeBron ends up winning this year because they just got stronger? Just so you know, the people yeah. that Blanca picked up, Rob picked up is ridiculous. So if they win this year, he gets a fifth, ties Magic and Kobe. And if he gets the next one, he gets a sixth. He ties MJ. Then he goes and signs with Bronny, and then they do something there, and he wins a seventh. You know they're going to make an argument about who's the GOAT with him, but I'm still going to say Michael. Yeah, because he's lost too many in the finals. That, I, that's the debate, right? He didn't go 6-0 and or whatever it was, right? So that's always going to be a debate. And, you know, Jordan just played, I think, in a tougher area. I think, I think everything's gotten softer now. I think, the argument, I think the argument the pro-LeBron guys are going to make is the fact that Jordan also was coached uh, by – arguably uh, uh, the top three greatest coaches of all time with the triangle offense. Right. And, uh, you know, then the argument of Jordan would be who's better Pippen or Anthony Davis, Dwayne Wade or Kyrie Irving. So that's another argument you got to make defensively Pippen's a top, you know, 20 defender of all time. If you want to put him there, is Kyrie a defender? Absolutely not. Is Dwayne Wade a top 20 best player? Right. Maybe Dwayne Wade is a top 40 best player. Is Kyrie a top 50? I don't know. Is Anthony Davis going to end up being a top 10 player of all time? Anthony Davis is probably going to end up being a top 20 player of all time. Uh, you know, so that that's the argument that you could make back and forth. But I'm still going to put Michael way ahead of LeBron. And are you a football fan? Do you What's your favorite football? I'm wearing a Texans hat for you because yeah. I think you're in Houston, right? Well, Deshaun Watson and I went at it one time on Twitter because right after he won, he went to celebrate – yeah. Uh, right after he lost in the playoffs, the next day he went in to celebrate his college football team winning. And I said, what are you doing celebrating after you just got kicked out of a playoffs? Right. Why are you doing backflips? You didn't win. Your college football player won. And him and I went back and forth and ESPN called me all this other stuff. But uh, yeah, I I'll follow football a little bit, but I'm, um, I'm probably more NBA than football is uh, what I would say. Fair enough. I'd like to get you back on, hopefully, during my prime time where the downloads are insane, where people are trying to draft their fantasy team and maybe get some advice on some top players in the NFL and stuff like that, maybe in August, hopefully next year. Uh, yeah, Patrick, I appreciate you being on. Short and sweet, man. Lion mentality, king of lions right here. Patrick David, thank you. Appreciate you, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs>